Hello everybody and welcome to the latest tutorial video on coding up PLCs. So last time we had a look at physically wiring up the I.O. to a PLC. So we we're looking at wiring in switches and uh, just wiring out some simple lights to let us know what's going on. Uh, today we're going to be having a look at some basic control inside of the PLC. So what we're going to be looking at is our normally open and normally closed switches. So if we come into tier portal, first thing we're going to do is get rid of this program that we uh, that we made last time that we're actually controlling with this thing here. Um, this is what's called a normally open switch. So I'm just going to get rid of this now and then we can start with a blank slate. Okay, so we've got rid of all of that nonsense and we are, have a completely blank PLC again. So the first thing we're going to do is have a look at what's called a normally open switch. And that, if you click up here and drag it down, that gives you this. We've got a few question marks above him, but this is just asking for, for an assignment for this normally open switch. The best way to visualize this is just a switch that you're used to in, in everyday life. So when you press it, you allow the current to flow through it, and when you don't, no current flows through it. So a good way of thinking of this ladder logic is uh, on the left hand side here you have a say a positive voltage and we have our ground over there so to let electricity flow through here we have to close this switch it's really that simple so we're going to give this switch an assignment and we're going to put it back on the switch that we had before now we've still got all of our plc tags that we set up in the last tutorial so all of the eight switches we have in along with the four lights on the outputs along with all of the, the system and the clock memory that we, uh, that we did in the video before that one even. You can just copy and paste, or oh, I'll show you a couple of ways. You can either come here and start typing switch one, and then you can pick it from this drop down menu. The closer you get, the, the less options you'll have. So we can choose that there. Good way of doing it. And we can double check the actual allocation is percentage I, so it's, a, it's an input, and it is 0.0. .0. So that's the one we're looking for. But say we didn't want to do that, so we're back to where we were. We can come down here in this details view and we can find the switch that we want in all of this, govins, click switch one, and then drag and drop it onto there. Now I should say that this is only up because I've clicked here. If I had uh, something else up here, that menu wouldn't be there. So if you, this is why it's good to separate your tags out into different tag tables. So you can just click on the relevant tag table, and drag and drop stuff from there. It just makes it easier when you've got a lot of these tags uh, assigned to lots of different things. So we've got our switch, but if we try and upload this, we are going to get an error. Um, because in the, there we go, error. In the world of the PLC, every switch has to have some sort of assignment assigned to it. So what we're going to do is pop on an assignment. So this is a coil. So if you imagine this as a real life switch, this is a real life load or, or a, a thing that, well, what are we going to do when switch one happens? And this is the beginnings of logic. So when switch one is active, we want to do something. What do we want to do? We want to turn on a light. So we can come up here, start to type in light, and we've got our choice. So when we do switch one, we want light one to come on. So let's upload this and see if it does what we think. Okay, so we have uploaded our code to the PLC. We are gonna start monitoring that and you can monitor what's going on by clicking this little glasses with the, the green play icon in the top bar. And you can see we have green here. Uh, just imagine green as voltage. So we have the voltage, but this switch is open because it's a normally open switch. Um, we're not doing anything. And because of that, we have this blue dotted line out to light one and light one itself is blue. So we're not doing anything. And if we actually look what's going on at the PLC, none of our lights are on. So this, this is all making sense. So if we go and throw switch one, there we go. So we can see on the PLC, we have our light indicating that something's happened. And inside of tier portal, you can see that everything has gone green now because we've, we've closed this switch and it is allowing the power, if you will, to, to flow through and turn this light to a, a Boolean one in terms of uh, Boolean logic. 
So let's, um, let's have a look at some of these other switches. Because this is a normally open switch, let's have a look at a normally closed switch. So we're going to throw this in down here. And this is a, it looks very similar, it's just got a dash in the middle. We're going to throw in a normally closed switch. We're going to put this normally closed switch onto switch 2. So I'll start typing switch and put this on 2. Now this switch works exactly the opposite way to a normally open switch. So when we don't, when, when, when we have a, a boolean zero to it, it will allow um, something to happen on the other side of this. And when we, when we go true or when we go one or however you're defining a, a, a true in boolean, then it will stop things going, going on downstream of it. So we're going to pull another assignment here and we're going to put this onto light two. And we're going to upload this to the PLC and see what happens. Okay, so now that's uploaded, we can immediately see um, I've turned the switches all back to the off position. So switch one is off and switch two is off. Switch one being off means that light one is off. And we can see that is the case on the PLC. The switch two being off means that light two is on because it's a normally closed switch. So it basically is the inverse have a normally closed switch. So if we come over to the PLC, if we switch switch one on, we still have that same behavior. When the switch is on, the light is on, and when it's off, the light is off. But the behavior of the second switch is the opposite. So the switch is off, but the light is on. And when that switch goes on, the light goes off. Easy. So this is all well and good, but basically we've just made some fancy light switches at this point. For the PLC to really be worth its salt, we need to start applying some logic to stuff. So what we're going to do is have a look at some very simple gates you can make with, uh, with, with these switches. Obviously, this is going to get a lot more complex in future videos, but this is just the, 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 your first steps into, into logic. So what we're going to do is create something called an AND gate. And an AND gate is effectively two switches in line with each other. So we're going to pull down two switches and one coil assignment. And I, sorry, I should say, these switches are both normally open switches. So you can kind of just see what's going to happen here. If this switch is on but this is off, that will be off. And vice versa, if, if one of these is off, doesn't matter what the other one's doing, the output will always be off. And this is called an AND gate. So we're going to put switch 3 here and switch 4 here. And we're going to give oh, and we're going to assign this to light 3. So the, um, the key word here being AND we have switch three and switch four, and only if they're both on, switch three and switch four, will light three actually work. So let's upload this and have a look. Okay, we are on the PLC, and it is time to see if I'm talking nonsense. So we have switch three and switch four off, and light three is off. If I come and I turn switch three on, nothing happens. But you can see in tier portal, Switch three has gone green, but switch four is not allowing that voltage, if you will, to pass through. So if we turn that off and if we switch 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 four on, you can see switch four itself has gone green, but nothing can get through switch three. So light three is off. If I switch switch three on now, they're both on and you can see we have the red light come on, which is light number three. And that's an AND gate. <laughs> it's a very easy way to remember it. This and this have to be on for the output to be on. And the last thing we're going to do in this video is have a look at an OR gate. Um, very similar to an AND gate, but it does something very different. So an OR gate lets the output be true if one input or the other input is on. Again, it's all, it's all very wordy, ANDs and ORs. And the way we do this is we, we create a branch in this um, in, in this 
line here. And I always think of these as wires because that's just how my head works. But this is all in series, but we're going to make a parallel, parallel circuit, if you will, to this. So we're going to click here. Make sure you click before the, where you want the branch to go in. We want the branch to come here. And then you come up here and you press this um, open branch in here. So this gives us another wire, if you will. And what we're going to do is move switch four down. Just click and drag to there. And then you can click and drag this double arrow head. Um, it only gives you set place where you can do it, but if you bring it to the, the square and let go. Now we have gone from switch three and four being in series with each other to being um, in parallel with each other. So let's upload this to the PLC and see how it behaves. Okie dokie. So we have switch three and switch four off and light three is off as expected. So we're gonna to come to the PLC and we're gonna switch switch number three on. There we go, light three comes on as expected. You can see in tier portal, um, you can see the path that that electricity is taking. I'm kind of hesitant to say these words because it starts to break down later on in the, in the series, but a good way to think of this base level of ladder logic is the flow of electricity. So we turn three off and we can turn switch four on and we get the same output. That red light comes back on because we have this path through to light three. And of course it doesn't matter if both inputs are on, the output is still on. It's only off when both inputs are off. So that is an AND gate and an OR gate in ladder logic. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, in the next video, we're going to be having a look at timers and starting to look at allocating things into memory. So hopefully I'll see you there.